Um, I can see from right where I'm sitting that the back of this engine stand needs to be raised up and uh, I may need to just redesign the way I have this thing mounted. I'm not sure yet how I want to do that. Uh, uh, you know, I, I could, I mean, I don't think I don't think this will slide inside of that. I've got it welded right now, and I could just raise this up and put something under that, put bolt back down through it. Uh, so what I'll need to do tomorrow is get the engine lift up here. I'm gonna need it up here anyway. So I can pick up the back end of this motor. And yeah, and I've got some, uh, I've got some flywheel bolts or flex plate. These are flex plate bolts. Now these should be shorter if they're flex plate bolts than what I have in here, which I think are flywheel bolts. And there is a difference. The difference is how, how long they are. If you put, yeah, I think these are gonna be the right ones. I've got flywheel bolts, but I've got them with washer behind them so that they won't hit the engine. If you put the wrong bolt in that little skinny flex plate, It'll hit the back of the engine, so that looks right. That looks right. And I got some gaskets here. I got a timing chain here, but I, I think Todd's already put one in it, so I don't think I'm going to need the timing chain. I just have an extra one. Uh, I'm probably going to repaint that engine because. For one thing, I'm going to want to paint those valve covers. I don't like that blue valve cover. But when I look at it, I see these these heads. Uh, these are these are camel hump heads, uh, and looks like one of them got a paint job and one of them didn't. So one of them's got the old Chevy red on it, and one's got the new orange Chevy paint on it. And, uh, it would probably be a good time to paint all of that so it's all the same color before it goes on the car. Maybe I can tape up around that new. You know, the thing about these, it's got a new shiny timing chain. The thing about these, you never see them once you get them on the car. You can't see them because they're up underneath that, uh, up underneath that water pump. So it's a piece of chrome that people buy those, put them on their car, but really you might as well use the old metal ones because nobody's ever going to see that chrome anyway. And one of the things I'd like to do is I'd love to use these header pipes. I'm running standard pipes on that Rambler. Let's go ahead and look at that Rambler. There's a couple things. Well, I need to, I need to take this wagon load of stuff back there too. I'll walk back there. I'll walk back there. We'll pop the hood on the Rambler and have a look at it because I think I ordered all of my parts for a short shaft. It's called short shaft setup. And I believe that I don't know whether I've got short or long shaft water pump on this Rambler. Maybe I can tell if I pop the hood and have a look at it. And I also might want to look down in there toward the bottom where those header pipes should come out at. Because if I was able to go in up under there and so you can't see you can't see too much here. Uh, that timing plate I was telling you about, it's down in there. Well you can't see that. And here's where my headers are here. And these are the old stock Chevy truck headers. Them new ones come out right about in the middle. And there's a cross member down there, but they might come out high enough so that I could uh, get a turnpipe on them and run them back to the flow masters that I've got on here. And let's see, short shaft or long shaft? Water pump. Well, let me look. Uh, uh. Hmm. Hmm. Might be a long shell. Yeah. Get my, get my hand. So I'm just going to reach up there and see from the pump 
where that thing is it's about a finger long let's go see how long the one is on this pump up here now you can you can get a little extension if you've got a, a short shaft to make it longer but the main thing is well two things one you got to have all the belts line up and I got a bunch of new pulleys and stuff and the other is you have to get close enough to the yeah, that's right that's the same I believe I'm gonna be good with that the other thing is your fan has to be close enough to the radiator to pull air through it so that'll work I've got these I've got these parts shiny parts I'm gonna put on it all right, so I know what I'm going to be doing in the morning. Uh, I'm going to be bringing that lift up here. So I'll set y'all back down. And I got some things on the trailer that needs to go out back there. I'll take them down there and then we'll come back. If I don't see you more tonight, I'll see you in the morning. Okay, so here's where we are today. I. Uh, I came out this morning with the idea of maybe painting this head here and I took an air compressor to blow the dust off the motor when I did all this paint blew off the motor so for some reason when this was painted there might have been something on here some oil or something but for some reason the paint didn't stick so all back in here and all around here the paint didn't stick which is not a problem uh, I can still paint it but what I don't want to do is I don't want to put a bunch of paint down in the motor so I'm going to want to have the valve covers on it and I'm going to want to have an intake manifold on it but I don't want to get rid of paint on this Holly Dominator intake so I went down there and found me a, a I've got a two barrel intake that uh, what's his name down the road Charles Dyer Brought, sent me sent home with me the other day and I can put that up there to keep the paint from going down in the manifold and stuff like that down in the holes uh, which will allow me to spray it and these valve covers uh, I took one of these valve covers out there and I sprayed it down with muriatic acid to see if the paint would come off of it and it did in one little tiny spot right there but other than that the paint pretty much stayed on it so I just thought well okay I'll let that dry off. I'll just stick that back on there and spray it with that on there because I don't mind if I get some Chevrolet orange painted over that Ford blue. Uh, I will take out my little T-bolts here and little chrome bit. I've already taken that out here. I probably won't use these valve covers. I'll probably put my Mickey Thompson valve covers back on here. I had a little bit of a fantasy of using the Holly intake with this Holly dual line carburetor and these Holly manifolds. Uh, but I don't need to do that, and so I think I won't. Uh, another thing I want to do is raise up the back of this motor. Now, I, I have something here. I bought this when I was setting up the rat rod last time, thinking that I could use these for some kind of an engine mount on the back of here. And they kind of could be used for that, but if they were, you wouldn't be able to, you know, put a bell housing or anything on that because it would be in the way. But they would literally fit right here. If I took this out and put these here, this would sit right here. And see, so you got this little, can you see that? This little straight part picking out, which would make it really easy for me to maybe weld a little piece to here for that engine to sit on. And that way I could take this away altogether. Um, I thought about raising that as it is, and I pulled out the. Uh, well, I, what I did is I was looking at the hole in the back of this engine stand that I cut up, and this Reese trailer hit that fit right in there, and this would come right down on that so that I could jack that up. I've already loosened the bolt on one side. I could loosen this one here and then jack that up. Uh, and then I could sit something other than that if I wanted to do something other than these pieces. 
and I haven't exactly completely decided which is the better way to go, but I was I was curious if I'd be able to uh, just raise that up because the front part there is mounted pretty solidly. I don't think the motor would like tumble over or anything. If I, if I took this out and if I just jacked this right up into that trailer ball, let's see what happens. I'm lifting that up and I could just get my balance where I want it to be here and then set something underneath that with a piece of wood or a piece of metal or any kind of thing there. Uh, what I'm going to want is I want this to be level here. I realize when I do that you can't see what I'm pointing at so let me pick you up and take you with me. I want this to be level here so if I take a level uh, and it does matter because if you think about it that's where your carburetor is going to sit if your carburetor is not level and you're setting your motor up you know you're not going to get a level flow of gas down into it now from right there I could come down a half hair Another half hair. That is pretty close. Now I took a couple pieces of metal down to the down to the pile back there this morning. A couple of pieces that I had cut up of that walkway. And if I had one of them, or even a, yeah, if I had one of them, I might could just slip that right up under there. Um, I may still want to get my engine lift because if I'm going to take this off and put that on it then I will want to uh, I will need to get the weight off that engine lift so one of the things I thought about I might could do is set a block of wood up under the oil pan like see those big tall pieces of wood right over there well, if I had one of them that would fit right up under that oil pan I could, I could loosen that. Y'all sit, y'all sit here while I go steady on this. I'm enjoying having the time to mess around with this. You know, uh, sometimes when you're messing with a car, you're in a hurry because you need to drive the car to work on Monday morning. And it's really a pretty joyous thing to be working on an engine and not be and I heard it to put everything back together because that, that way you have the time to spend the time to get everything else set up like you want it to be. Uh, I could also take, yeah, I've got a jack over here. I could also take, take this jack put it under the flywheel. I think I could do that without warping that flywheel. <clears throat> oh, it's going to have to go a good ways, though, from there. Hmm. 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 It's not bad like it is. If I put something under here, that wouldn't be a bad thing. I think I will walk down the pile, bring me up a couple of metal pieces, and I can slip over in there. Let's see what I think of that. I suppose I can get really clever and take a tape measure and get me a measurement and then walk down there with the tape measure and see what I could find just to fit over in there. So that's about, uh, oh, that's about two inches. Well, you know what's two inches probably is uh, another trailer ball. Mm. 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 
Let me look around.